Today I've got a very interesting topic considering the last couple of years and being faced with lockdowns, uh, pivots in training and helping people get towards their fitness goals. Today we're going to be covering an easy strength review. So the book by Dan John and Pavel, we are going to cover off on their easy strength program, touch on the 40-day workout, and also provide you guys with some minimalist style options and training uh, variations that you can use at home if you don't have access to the barbell. So like I said, guys, we are live. Feel free to jump into the chat and say hello or ask any questions, comments. I will get back to you personally or answer them at the end of the, uh, the show. And before we begin, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share this sort of stuff with your friends if you are so inclined. Now, the original Easy Strength program has been out for years. The book has sold thousands, millions, I'm not sure, hundreds of thousands of copies most likely if we uh, look at the metrics on Amazon. And I will firstly begin by saying I am a fan. It was one of the very first strength books that I purchased uh, going down my journey towards passing my Russian kettlebell certification. And fundamentally, it has shaped a lot of my programming for busy professionals and busy individuals that have minimal time that want to make the most out of their training. Uh, so we're going to be covering off easy strength. We'll touch on some of the basic premises uh, and what they mean for the busy individual. And then we'll also dig into the 40-day workout, which will be the focus of the programming for a minimalist option if you are stuck at home or stuck in a place without barbells and equipment to progress your training. Now, the original Easy Strength program itself started off with uh, working around 80 to 90% of your rep range uh, and never missing a rep. So the premise is practice and leaving enough in the tank that you've always got one to two more reps in the tank to perform at your best when required. And the breakdown and structure was only lifting two to three days a week and picking five big lifts. So if we talk about the five movements, which we'll get on to a second, it was five exercises working within 10 reps of each exercise, so never going above 10, but focusing between that two to five rep range. So never going close to failure. So it's not about pushing uh, towards a PB. It's actually about greasing the groove, that simple Pavel methodology and progressing over the long term. Now, this is perfect if you have the equipment appropriate to train two to three days a week and load to the required 80 to 90% rep range. And that's obviously usually in the form of a barbell. And there's no denying if you want to get strong, use a barbell. That is the quickest and fastest method towards getting uh, to your goals. Now, 40-day uh, workout. We talked about uh, the minimalist options, which we'll go into a second, but the 40-day workout was prescribed by Pavel uh, to Dan originally, and, it, and, and he simply summed it up as this. Uh, for the next 40 days, pick five lifts. Do them every workout, never miss a rep, and never go close to struggling. So you can pick five exercises, which we'll talk about the human movements, uh, but the principle is, don't go close to failure, and when it feels light, add more weight. So it's a really simple concept that sometimes people struggle with because they think they need to be maxing out every workout. But what this does is just consistently get you working in that rep range that you're comfortable with. And that 80 to 90%, if we start looking over a 40-day period, probably going to be a little bit too much for most people to do 40 days, which the intent of the 40-day workout you do up to five times per week for the next 40 workouts. So there's also the option of even easier strength that Dan brought out, uh, which talks about lowering the volume or intensity, sorry, down to that 40 to 80% bracket over the 40-day workout, which for the beginner trainer and someone that isn't quite as confident if you have a barbell or in some of these body weight movements, which we'll go into, is a perfect loading range to just progress slowly and allow your body to adapt over 40 workouts. Traditionally, we see a lot of people hit PBs around day 20, 25 after simply repeating the same five movements for that period and never getting close to failure. It allows your body to get enough stimulus 
to then adapt without cooking yourself so you can back up for those five days a week. And the breakdown usually goes day one, day two, do the workout, rest day three, day uh, day four, day five workout, rest day six, and then day seven workout. Um, that obviously you can stagger and move your rest days as you require. Now, I've used this program prolifically through my own clients as well. And traditionally, the results have been replicated from what we see from Dan's program. People get stronger. They can simply come in, do their five exercises, stay within that 10 rep, rep range, uh, and then cool down and they're out of there. It's literally 30 to 45 minutes depending on an individual. And you can actually have short rest in there because you're not spending your time at the red line of that 90% area. Now, we talked about the five movements we can choose. Now, that's based on the five human movements of push, pull, hinge, squat, and loaded carry. Now, if we're talking in terms of barbell, that could be bench press, overhead press. It could also be uh, bent over rows or heavy bent over rows, but I would always prefer pull-ups if we have that in us or progressing towards pull-ups, which we'll go into there. And then we talk about hinge. It could be deadlift. could be kettlebell swings if you want to work on uh, high rep ballistic which can also uh, give you a bit of a rest from that rule of 10 philosophy. And then we've also got squats, which is traditionally a barbell squat, barbell front squat, and then a loaded carry. So farmer's carry is usually the carry of choice because it's simple to execute, and that's two heavy weights beside your body walking for a period of distance. Now, if we talk about not having access to those types of barbells, uh, farmer's handles and those sorts of things, we then come into the conundrum of how do we use this style of program to get strong when we don't have the necessary equipment available, which we'll touch on in a second. We'll just go through the rep range first, which is that rule of 10. Now we look at the rep structures we can use and focusing only on 10 reps at a time of each movement. So we're literally going push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry, 10 reps of each, done for the day. We've got simple structures like two by five, five by two, three by three, six by one, one by 10 on our lighter days, and then five, three, two. Now, if we look at that, if we look at a appropriate rest timing in between it, we want to make sure we stick to the original premise of Pavel's idea and concept is never missing a rep. So if you're working up at the higher end of the range and you're starting to push into that 80% territory and you need to rest more, you rest more. But if we're down to the 40, 50, 60, and we can simply have a quick minute rest between sets and go through the motions, that's where we still start to really optimize our time and effort because we simply go push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry, one minute rest in between, done. Now, the original concept also with our rep range was to stick to the same rep structure for every exercise. Now, that's going to be a little bit harder with obviously our loaded carry, which we can sub in things like the ab wheel or uh, calisthenics such as a hanging leg raise, which we'll go into a second, which we can stick within that rep range. But if we've got the loaded carry, we want to be going to a point where we're not going to failure, so we're not dropping the weight, but we're carrying the weight uh, for a decent amount of time to feel the effect of it, but obviously not cooking that grip strength and going to failure. And then we talk about high rep ballistics, two sets of 25, one set of 50, simple done and dusted kettlebell swing will uh, will work there. Now, if we move on to the to the conundrum of not having a barbell, uh, and we and we talk about in terms of the last couple of years, access to the gym can be quite difficult. And some of us now simply just like to train at home and work on our own sort of program or programs we can find online. So that's become more prevalent. Now we can use things like body weight style training in this same format. And if we look about talking, if we sorry, if we talk about terms of the body weight exercises, it's all in relation to your level or ability. So we can use advanced body weight movements like our pistol squat, uh, one arm push up, pull ups, weighted pull ups. Uh, we've also got uh, handstand push ups if, if you're so inclined as well. And then if we talk about our hinge movements, no equipment that sort of leaves us in a little bit of a, uh, a space where we might not necessarily have the right equipment for a hinge movement. But what I would suggest, you've got things like Nordic hamstrings. So you can definitely work within your rule of 10 rep range for your Nordics. Or you can do things like a hamstring slide 
uh, where you can do your high reps, so your two sets of 25, one set of 50, to still focus on hamstrings and posterior chain. Obviously, it's not going to be as effective as having a kettlebell, a barbell, but if we're in that place where we don't have access to it, it will it will suffice for, for a period of time to allow us to see the benefits, particularly if we're partnering that with our pistol squat. Uh, you will see the benefits from it. And then if we talk about our... Uh, loaded carry options or ab options for for no equipment or low equipment. We've got our hanging leg raise, which you can start with seated leg raise. You've got a multitude of different body weight exercises like hollow rocks. Uh, and you've also got things like ab wheels. If you've got $10, $20 you want to go and purchase an ab wheel, you've then got that in your arsenal from the original program to stick within your rule of 10. Now, if we talk about adding kettlebells, this still sometimes doesn't give us the ability to load movements as effectively as a barbell. So for our kettlebell options, what I would suggest is actually adding split stance and single leg stuff to really help us isolate on our asymmetries and work on those other issues and increase mobility, which if we then progress back to a barbell or we then want to go to barbell style, tr style training, our body will be prepared for it. But if we have double kettlebells at home ranging in a couple of sizes, we can simply add them to a loaded split squat uh, like a Bulgarian, so a rear foot elevated or even a front foot elevated split squat to get a large amount of benefit with minimal amount of weight. So split squats are a perfect accompaniment. You can also do rack, front rack squats if you've got double bells, uh, but then you can also use your kettlebells to load your pistol squat if you're getting strong enough. So you can see how the rule of 10 has got different layers on top of it that you can uh, progress sequentially and add just a little bit of weight to have a maximum effect on single leg split stance training where you don't have to go necessarily straight back to the barbell to get the necessary effective load. What I would also say for those people progressing towards single arm push-ups, pistol squats, you've then got your progressions down towards it from like your standard push-ups or elevated push-ups uh, down into obviously your more advanced levels going towards your pistol squat, single arm push-up. So you can still simply stick to your two sets rule where you do two sets of 20 if you're only at body squat, uh, squat body weight squat, sorry, body weight squat level, you can progress down those uh, position sequentially, but still will stick within your two sets or greasing the groove methodology that Pavel describes. Because if you're simply not at uh, one arm push up and pistol squat, it doesn't mean you can't do this style of training. It just simply means you start at your high rep options for body weight squat, close foot squat, airborne lunge, and you work down using the rep structure to get to smaller reps down to your single pistol squat when you're ready. So you execute your single pistol and then you can start going back up the five sets of two or the six by one, five sets of two, three by three, two by five. So you've got that lineal, uh, sorry, you've got that progressive approach where you're decreasing in reps until you hit that main skill. And then you come out by doing more reps of that main skill once you've hit proficiency. Now the kettlebell extras we can do, our single arm press, double overhead press uh, for our pushing version. You've then got your kettlebell to load for pull-ups. You can use uh, it obviously for your horizontal rows if you're progressing that way again. And then obviously your kettlebell swings come back into the mix. So you can do your two by, two by 25, one by 50 and those sorts of stuff. So you don't need a lot of weight. And then if we talk about if we only have one or two barbells, uh, sorry, kettlebells, you can then do... Uh, bottoms up press and weighted press and things like that for your pressing and overhead versions or your push day, uh, which will help give you a bit more longevity in the, the set of bells you might have at home where if you don't have access to a lot of kettlebells. Uh, and then finally, with your loaded carry versions uh, for your kettlebells, you've obviously got your farmers, rack and overhead carry options. Um, and then you can use things like your get up as well to substitute for your loaded carry because if you can stably hold a kettlebell overhead through the get up you're going to be pretty strong or pretty mobile all over or it's, it, it's at least going to highlight any positions we need to work on so making sure you obviously stick within that rule of 10 range if you're progressing down in difficulty if you're only new on the journey for body weight style movement stay at those higher reps but only work those two to three sets 
grease the groove, leave plenty in the tank, progress down in difficulty, and then once you hit that main skill like your single arm push-up, pistol squat, you then progress by adding more reps and then load in our pistol, for instance, if we want to increase the difficulty. So 40 days, push, pull, hinge, squat, loaded carry. Rule of 10, so no more than 10 reps of workout. If we're working high rep ballistics, 2 by 25, 1 by 50, five days a week, never push close to failure. And this will give you a program you can easily spend time on for 40 days. And if you do hit that PB or hit that point after 20, 20 workouts or 25 workouts or what most people see, you can pivot your training, pick something else. But what you'll notice is if you're stuck and you have no access to equipment throughout for whatever reason, you'll be able to maintain a large amount of strength. Traditionally, we see with this type of programming, you leave, lose no strength on your barbell movements. If not, you increase them. Uh, you also can identify any mobility restrictions because you're going to single and split set stint single leg and split stance, sorry. So you're working on that element too. So you're going to come back to your barbell training in better condition than what you started in usually because it forces us to focus on things we may not necessarily find in our traditional barbell movements. So there you have it, team. We are a 40-day workout, a minimalist guide. Like I said, I am a fan. If you are interested in building strength, in a minimalist approach, Dan Pavel, Easy Strength, fantastic book. I would thoroughly recommend you purchase it yourself uh, and give it a read and actually give the 40-day workout a go for yourself, whether it's in a bodyweight version, kettlebell version, or a barbell version, doesn't matter. You can have a crack at this. It will work. It has worked for numerous people before you. Hundreds of thousands of copies sold, most likely. I don't have those sort of stats. I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Dan, fan of Pavel, but it's an unbiased opinion in the fact that I've trained hundreds of people in this method and it works like a treat. Credit where credit's due. Give it a go. Give the 40-day workout a crack. Uh, it's a really simple process uh, and a really easy way to optimise strength regardless of what equipment you have available uh, at any stage of your training career. So like I said, team, at the very start, like, follow, share, subscribe to the channel. Uh, feel free to comment, ask questions, email me at brett at minimalismfitness.com if you've got any direct questions. I'll post some links to the book, uh, to some articles that will help explain this in a little bit more detail in the video. Uh, but thank you very much for tuning in and I will talk to you soon.